Hi, I'm Mr. Adams. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about cello. Cello is the almost b the biggest, it's the third biggest instrument in the uh, orchestra. It's bigger than violin and viola, not quite as big as the bass. Um, I'm going to give you a few uh, parts to know, a few things to know about the cello, just so you can look at it and hear it a little bit. Uh, first of all, when you get your cello, if you rent one or buy one, you should have a few things in your case or in your rental packet. The first thing, uh, of course, is the instrument, which I'll show you in a second. The next thing is this. It looks like a hockey puck. Yours may have a little thing in the middle of it. This one doesn't. It's just a piece of rubber, basically. It's called a rock stop, and that sits flat on the floor like that. And you put the end pin, which I'll show you in a second of your cello, into the hole in the middle, and that keeps it from sliding around. So the rubber part sits on the floor, and that way it doesn't move. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that down. <clears throat> you may also, instead of a rock stop, you may have a strap. It looks kind of like a luggage strap that goes under your chair. Uh, if you get one of those, let me know, and I'll, I'll help you work with it. Uh, the other thing you will have is a bow, looks like this. I'll go over the parts of this in a second. You'll have uh, rosin that looks something like this. This is in a plastic box, you open it up. Yours may be a cardboard box, it doesn't matter. And uh, there's a little piece of rosin in here. It's kind of like amber, like from Jurassic Park, but they found the mosquito in, that kind of stuff. Um, that's for your bow. And the last thing you may have is a music stand. This is a nice little fold-up music stand. It sits in front of you, it can fold up really small, it's really portable. Um, and you may have a bag that that goes in as well. Okay, so those are the things you should have with you in your pack. Now, for the instrument itself, there are several parts I want to show you, and it's kind of big, so I'm going to try to show you in, in chunks here. The top part, the part that's going to be closest to your head, uh, is actually called the head of the instrument. Okay, so we have the top right here that looks like a little uh, swirl. That's called the scroll, kind of like a piece of paper rolled up, like an old-fashioned scroll. That's where they get that name from. This part right here, I'm holding it sideways, but this part right here is called the uh, peg box. These are the tuning pegs, these four things sticking off the side. We're not going to bother those right now, we're going to leave all those alone. Um, you have, hold it up correctly here, somewhat. You have this long part, which is the neck, which is like you have a head up here and then you have a neck just below your head. Same thing here, a neck. You have the shoulders of the instrument right here, shoulder, shoulder. You have the sides right here, which some people also call the bouts, B-O-U-T, bout. You have a belly. You have a back. Okay. Um, on the bottom, this is a little bit different. If you've watched the violin and viola videos, this is a little bit different. You have an end pin down here, just like they do, but yours actually comes out on the cello. So you can adjust this to kind of match how tall you are, how short you are. Okay. Mine usually be out about that far. So you just pull it out a little bit, tighten this back down so it doesn't move. So yours actually adjust on a cello and on the bass as well when you watch that video. Um, down here we have the tailpiece, this black part right here, tailpiece. We On the cello, just like the violin and viola, we have four silver pegs. These are called fine tuners. They do kind of the same thing as the regular tuning pegs on the top, but they make very really small adjustments. And just like we're going to leave those alone, we're going to leave these alone too. We're not going to mess with these tuning pegs at all, the big ones or the little ones. You can leave them all alone for now. Next part you have is right here on either side. These are called F holes because they're shaped like a cursive F and they let the sound come out, okay? So when you play an instrument, the air inside of here vibrates. It has to have some way to get out so you can hear it. So that's how the sound gets out. And you also have right here, this wooden part is the bridge, okay? Uh, yours may have like a little heart on the middle of it right here. I don't know if you can see that or not in the camera, right here. Um, and they look kind of look like Swiss cheese. That's the bridge and that heaps, helps keep the strings up off of the fingerboard. Now the fingerboard is important, I left it for last. It's important because that's where you're gonna have, obviously, your fingers all the time, okay? Fingerboard is this black part. It's not a fretboard like guitar. It's a fingerboard, it's different because it doesn't have frets, all right? Um, for the cello, it's a little different than violin and viola because those go up on your shoulder. Cello sits between your legs and the pegs up here should be right about even. Move my rock stop a little bit. It should be right about even with your ear. So it should sit right about like that, all right? And you shouldn't have to really hold it with your hands because your legs are kind of holding it. It's in between your two legs. And it's pretty much straight up and down. It's off a little bit to the side just so you don't hit yourself in the head, but it's almost straight up and down. Your left hand goes over here, and if you need help with which one's left, if you do this with both your hands, it's the one that makes an L the right way. That's your left hand. Um, and your left hand plays on the strings. It moves on the strings. Your right hand has another very important job. It's what makes the sound on the strings. It's what creates the sound. So we're going to do that one of two ways. First way is with a bow. So here's the bow. It's kind of long, so I'll move it for you. The bow has several parts too. So on the bow, we have a stick. That's this long part that looks like a stick. Uh, we have the tip, which is the end furthest away from your hand. 
this part down here that I'm not touching, this light colored part is called the bow hair and we don't want to touch that because the oil from your fingers can get on there and tear it up. So don't touch the bow hair. Um, this little box, the wooden box down here is called the frog. I don't know why, but that's just what it's called. It's called the frog. And we have uh, the screw down here. Now this screw will actually turn, but if you turn it too far, you can break your bow. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna bother this. It's like we're not bothering the tuning pegs. We're gonna leave this alone and we're gonna leave all the tuning pegs alone. Okay, I'll teach you how to use them later on, but not right at the beginning. Um, and that's how you use the bow. That's all you need to know for the bow. Now for the cello, the bow hold is a little bit different. So when I say bow hold, I'm talking about your right hand. Take your right hand, your thumb goes right here. So not inside of that, right next to it. Your finger goes across here and your other two fingers can go all the way down to the bottom of the frog and your pinky can sit there like that. Now on violin and viola, if you've watched those videos, you've probably seen that my fingers were all on top. That's because we hold that bow like this or vertically up and down. Cello, since the instrument is the opposite direction, the bow is also the opposite direction. So the bow is horizontal, we're holding it up. So your fingers can go down a little bit further to help hold it up a little bit, okay? It should be comfortable, whatever you do. So it shouldn't feel like you're really having to clench or anything like that, it should be pretty comfortable. You don't have to have your finger on the screw down here, just nice and comfortable. Your thumb and your middle finger should be pretty much right across from each other, right here, okay? They might move a little bit here or there, depending on your hand shape, but it should be pretty close. All right, now I'll let you hear this. And like I said, we're not gonna use the bow at first in class. We're gonna do it a different way, which I'll show you in a second. But I want you to hear it with the bow first. <laughs> That's with the bow. I'm gonna move the table out of my way so I don't hit it again. Um, that's one way you can play it. Now the other way, the way we're gonna do it at the beginning of class is with your fingers. So you're gonna take your thumb, lift this up so you can see. You're gonna put it right here on the corner of this. You're not gonna put it under it or under the strings. It's gonna go right on the corner, just like that. Okay, right on the edge of the fingerboard. I'm gonna put it back in my rock stop. Right, right on the edge of the fingerboard. And you're gonna wrap your finger around so it's resting on whatever string you wanna play. You're just gonna pull it sideways. You're not going to pull it up, away from the instrument, you're going to pull it sideways. Okay? And you'll notice when I do that, my other, my finger, when it stops, is sitting on the next string, just hanging out. Not, not pulling it, not twisting it, just sitting there. Okay? So when I do that, I can play the same, play the same thing with my left hand, uh, but I, I start the sound with my finger instead of with the bow. It sounds like this. the cello. The cello you'll notice is nice and deep sounding um, and it's the only one that we sit down and play up like this. I'll show you the bass in another video and you can go back and watch the violin and viola videos as well that go up on your shoulder. So if you have any questions about cello or the other instruments let me know. My email address is samuel.adams2 at montgomery.kyscores.us. Um, I'll be glad to help you and answer any questions you have or help you get started on the, the cello uh, as we go throughout our class. So until I see you, see you later.